In this video, I'm going to show you all step by step how I actually edit my Fujifilm RAW files in Lightroom featuring these four of my favorite images. What's up everyone, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my Lightroom editing workflow step by step. My workflow really relies on presets because of two reasons. One, I need to be able to edit quickly. And two, this is really to maintain the quality and consistency of my edits across a single shoot or wedding, as well as across my entire portfolio, spanning across different weddings, shoots, and just pretty much any other professional gigs that I do. With that said, I don't really believe in the one-click preset. Since every photo is different, more often than not, every edit will also be different. So sometimes little tweaks are needed here and there, and sometimes really completely different approaches are needed between two different photos. So for me, preset Presets serve as a way for me to quickly apply a group of settings that I use on a frequent basis and then use that as a starting point for the edit. With that said, I am excited to announce that I've teamed up with Moment to launch an updated preset pack for 2021, the Home Preset Pack. For those of you who have purchased my previous RPB preset pack, this pack is pretty much 95% the same as RPB Color and RPB Mono with just like a few minor tweaks that are updated to the new cameras that I've been using. And it also has the addition of two common remixes that I use that are based on the previous adjustment toolkit and like adding a few remixes. But basically, these presets reflect my current editing workflow in 2021 and they are the exact same presets that I'm using for all my pro wedding and portrait work that I've been sharing on YouTube and on Instagram and on my website. So if you like how that stuff looks, these are not lookalikes or watered down versions. These are the actual presets that I use. So with that, let's edit some photos. So the first thing that you'll notice is that there are three different folders. You have the adjustment toolkit, which allows you to adjust the black and white fade for the black and white looks, as well as the color fade for the color looks. And it also has different sharpening presets if you're using a Fujifilm X-Trans sensor, a GFX medium format Fujifilm camera, or some type of non-Fujifilm camera. So you can get the right sharpening settings for high quality photos, regardless of what you're shooting with. The next folder is the Fujifilm presets, and basically it has the four different looks, which are Archer, Embarcadero, Hillside, and Powell. And you will see that it's divided between Fujifilm new generation models, so that's kind of like the X-T3 and newer, and then the Fujifilm old generation models, so kind of like X-T2, X-T1, and all that stuff like that. And also X-T3 specific, as Lightroom has a specific color profiles just for the X-T3. So you'll have to just see which ones are available for your Fujifilm camera if you shoot with Fuji. If it's italicized and kind of grayed out, that means it's not the applicable one. So just use the ones that are kind of brighter and non-italicized. And if you shoot with a non-Fujifilm camera, that's where these non-Fujifilm compatible presets are right here. So you can get that dialed in look for your other camera systems. And with a little bit of adjusting around and tweaking, you can actually get these looks to match up pretty seamlessly with the Fujifilm ones if you're using two different camera systems for a shoot. So the first look that I want to talk to you about is Powell. And Powell is kind of like my go-to preset for any type of weddings or portrait work. It's really a general photography type of look. And I also use it for anything around the house with documenting my kids, taking product photos, anything really. It's highly versatile and you can tweak it to kind of go as hard or soft as you want as far as the contrast, the colors. This look is inspired by Kodak Portra 160 as that was one of my favorite color films when I got started in photography and it also blends in the Fujifilm Color Science uh, Pro Negative Standard as that's what I shoot it when I shoot pro shoots. So it kind of blends those two looks in order to give kind of like a faded film look but still have the bold colors of the Fujifilm Color Science. So for this image, it's a very colorful and cultural wedding. It was a Indian wedding um, here in kind of like wine country in Northern California and once you apply the Powell look, you'll see that it 
already kind of like warms up the photo slightly um, and gives a little bit of a softer look. So that's a good starting point for this photo. And then what I'm gonna do is really just increase the shadows and bring back some of that detail and then bring back the highlights down throughout maybe like 80. And then the next step from this point on is really just to kind of adjust the warmth a little bit. So we're gonna, let's see, make it warmer. Probably around here is good. And then um, now I might wanna bump the exposure a little bit just to give a little bit of detail back in the skin tones. And at this point, we're looking pretty good. So what I usually do from this point is I add graduated filters. Um, usually I use like a negative 0.32 exposure. And I'm going to do that just on the edges to kind of give a slight vignette that isn't too obvious and round. So that's what we got right here. And I'm thinking this looks pretty good. And then the last thing you'll notice, if you're shooting with Fujifilm, I highly suggest you go into the sharpening settings and adjust the masking by holding alt or option on a Mac and just adjusting this slightly until the sharpening or the white parts is only on the relevant details. So the skin um, details rather than the pores and all that stuff. So I'm gonna bring that to like 80 and that is kind of the Powell look. So if you wanna look at the before and after, we have before and after. It really warms it up, brightens it up, kind of gives it a little bit of slightly softer look, but it still has the contrast that isn't too washed out. So now we're gonna go on to what's called Embarcadero. And this is more for those type of backlit situations where you want to regain some of the contrast back, or at the same time, if you wanna have a more epic look that has a punch of contrast, this is what it is. So it kind of goes off of the Powell look, but gives a little bit more punch, um, a little bit more warmth, and it kind of goes from there so that you can really accentuate those scenes and those powerful images. So the first thing that we're gonna do is apply the Embarcadero and put that right here. And you'll notice that it does warm up the highlights a little bit, um, but it also brings down the shadows down a little bit because it's gonna give a little bit of a moodier look. So what we want to do is kind of adjust the, the highlights down just a little bit. And then what really needs to be done is bring up the shadows here and then bring up the exposure. You don't wanna go too bright because we're gonna keep it a little bit moody, right? Um, and now we're gonna warm up the image here. It's a little too much, so we're gonna bring it to like 5,500. And then now I'm gonna add kind of like my graduated filters again, one at the top one here, one here, and one here. And here I wanted to talk about kind of like the adjustment toolkit as far as the fade. So the difference between the Embarcadero and the Powell is they use different fade adjustments. So this is kind of like the medium fade, but the Powell has like this stronger fade, which you'll see it loses some of the detail in the suit. Um, but if you don't like either of those, you can go with kind of like this weak one, which will give you more detail in the blacks and the shadows. But in this case, we're gonna bring it to medium so that we got some kind of faded look. At the same time, it still has a little bit more of a punch. And then let's see, I'm going to just increase the shadows just a little bit more. And then now we're gonna go in, dial in the sharpening like we've done in the other Fujifilm files. So just drag it over until you don't have as much pore detail getting sharpened. All right, and we go here. And then now we can go before and after. So you can see it really still keeps kind of like that contrast. It gives a, a slightly smoother faded look um, and really warms up kind of like those orange tones. So I like to use this for a little bit more stronger stylized photos. Um, but again, the, the colors are not hugely tweaked within any of this preset pack. So it's not kind of like a stylized color grade, um, but more it just takes the colors um, and really keeps them grounded, but adds a little bit of style, just a little bit, just to make it look a little bit better than real life and keep that nostalgia look going. All right, so let's move on to Archer. Archer is kind of like my tried and true look for any type of documentary photography. So we're thinking strong moments, storytelling, um, and it's inspired by the Ilford HP5 film. That's, that's like my all-time favorite film for film photography. 
And it also combines that with the bold contrast of the Fujifilm Acros film simulation. So I think it's a really awesome combination to have really kind of like isolation of raw moments of emotions and really accentuating the shadows and lines and kind of mixed lighting situations. It does well in there so that you don't have to manage all that white balance chaos, so to speak. So let's dive in and see how this looks. So once we apply Archer right here, it will be a little bit dark. So usually let's go back and I usually adjust the exposure to kind of match up more before we add the preset because it doesn't look as good. So let's just bump it up to one stop of exposure since I was shooting in a high contrast situation. I usually shoot underexposed. So now let's add Archer back in and now we kind of got it a little bit closer. So what we're going to do is let's see adjust the shadows we're going to bring that up to like let's say 75 and then i'm going to bring down the highlights just a smidge all right now let's bring back the exposure up just a little bit more bring down the highlights and then i'm actually going to bring down the whites so we can get some more detail back in her dress now we're looking pretty good so i'm going to these parts are a little bit distracting to me. So I'm gonna add some more graduated filters right here to kind of isolate that. And I'm gonna show you the before and after just so you can kind of see what that does. So before, after, now I'm just gonna bring up the exposure just a little bit more. Maybe dial down the highlights just a little bit more and then go in. <laughs> That's a awesome expression here. So we're going to go in and just adjust the sharpening again and then just bring up the noise reduction just ever so slightly because I think we shot it at, yeah, 1250 ISO. All right. So now let's check a look at the before and after of this image. So here to here. So it really just kind of gets rid of all the distracting colors here and just goes straight for the emotion so that we can see their faces as they're getting pushed up on the chairs during this uh, awesome wedding reception. So this is a really cool look. I use this for a lot of things. You'll just notice that when you have a severely underexposed photo, just bring it back closer to, you know, normal exposure and then you'll get the best kind of results from there. So the last type of preset that I have is called Hillside. And this is mainly for images that you want kind of like the same kind of look of Archer, but you want to elevate it even more. So this kind of takes that and increases the contrast. It drops the shadows so you can really just kind of like have more of a moodier look or high contrast silhouettes like this one. And it just really does well with minimalist compositions or kind of like really cool framing that uses shadow elements. So this is a good example right here. This image was taken in San Francisco. This was really looking overlooking the coast, but there's a cool array of trees that I felt like could frame this couple perfectly, but also give this kind of epic scene. So this is what we're going to edit for this hillside look. So the first thing we're going to do again is just apply the look and it Right there, it gets it really, really close um, so because of the silhouette look that I have is kind of dialed in. So what we're gonna do is increase the contrast just a little bit and then maybe just bump up exposure just to get the highlights in a little bit better state. And then I'm just gonna actually, this part's a little bit too bright for me. So I'm just gonna drag a graduate, maybe like a couple of these graduated filters just to take the edge off the eye looking right over here. And now I'm gonna go in and adjust the sharpening. And that's pretty much it. So <laughs> that one was a pretty quick edit. So if you have any type of stylized, moodier looks, Hillside is gonna be your go-to. For those who are newer to photography or photo editing in general, you know presets may seem like a quick way to get a, a quick cool look to your photos, but presets should never and will never really replace kind of knowing how to use Lightroom inside and out. So I encourage you to really learn how to edit in Lightroom first and commit to understanding what each tool and adjustment slider does to the actual photo. And when you're using another photographer's preset, my philosophy is pretty simple. It's basically applying the preset to the photo, going through 
each slider by slider and seeing which adjustment is kind of like doing what. And if you don't like something, just simply change it and then kind of like create a new preset that fits better with your unique photography style. So if you have any questions about my editing process or Fujifilm Lightroom presets, let me know down in the comments below. And if this video helped you out and you want to see more editing videos, demos, deconstructions, all those kind of things, please give it a thumbs up, please. As always though, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as I post a new Fujifilm or photography video every week. But if that's too long for you, be sure to follow me on Instagram at at photo as I'm posting new tips, tricks, and tutorials every single day. If you are not following me on there, your photography is going to be lagging. I guarantee it. All right, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you all in the next one.